everyone and welcome to the very first reading vlog of 2024. You're currently stacked on top of a giant box of DVD box sets that I'm trying to put out in the living room and you're stacked very precar precariously so just please be careful and sit still during this portion. So here we are in the year 2024. I took December off because work was tough. My dog got sick and the holidays got in the way. So here we are starting fresh in January. So, so far this month I am reading one book and I've already read two books. So the first book I am reading is for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster and that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumont. It is a well-known story about a man who is wrongfully imprisoned and then takes decades out of his life to seek vengeance on those who wrongfully imprisoned him. So far, I'm about 25% of the way through the novel, so I have finally reached the vengeance aspect. And so far, I am very much enjoying it. The first part where he was wrongfully imprisoned and that guy who was just good at everything helped him out was a little bit boring, but now that the story is really going, I am starting to enjoy it more. The next thing I read was Robin Year One by Chuck Dixon, Scott Beatty, and all of the illustrators right there, and I gave this book five stars. It is essentially a little collection of Dick Grayson in his first year as Robin, where he fights off many different foes, such as Two-Face, the Mad Hatter, and others. He's also dealing with Alfred and Batman's struggle to keep a child essentially on their team of crime fighting and it was very very good. And the art in it was also very nice. I really enjoyed all the color work and the simple style of it all. It wasn't too complicated to understand and I really enjoyed the relationship between Batman and Robin and I really really enjoyed it. I will soon be reading Batgirl Year One and Nightwing Year One as well. And finally, the audiobook that I listened to for the first week of the month was Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, which was a 2005 published urban fantasy about a female who essentially joins this dark brotherhood of vampire warriors because she's mated to their leader. They all have really stupid names like Wrath, Vicious, Rage, and Zadist, spelt with a Z good stuff there. Um, I gave the book one star because it is just a lot of the typical conventions of that genre and I do not vibe with them. I was only made aware of the story because on Goodreads it's listed as one of the best adult vampire novels and I heavily disagree. If you are into those type of dark vampire romances where they're obsessed with mating and rough guys in leather, that's all for you, buddy. That's not what I was expecting, and it's not what I wanted out of a vampire novel. So it just wasn't for me. I'm not going to continue the series. The one star is just me not liking those aspects of that genre. It wasn't badly written. I think it was pretty par for the course, except for the brutal fat phobia. I mean, as much as you can give from the early 2000s, you know, they're not great views. There's also typical um, racial stuff and transphobia. Unfortunately, that was very common in the early 2000s, but the fat phobia was pretty shocking. It was a heavily discussed topic and gross way to describe people. So yeah, that book series is going to be tossed out. I'm not even going to try the rest of them. And aside from reading Batgirl and Nightwing Year One, I'm not sure what else I will be picking up this month, so stay tuned. After the month of not reading really anything, I'm very excited to get back into reading, so I'll see you soon.
Okay, here we are again. It is a couple of weeks later since my last clip, and I have read four books. So let's just, you know, do a quick roundup of each of those. So the first two books I read were the comics Batgirl Year One and Nightwing Year One by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty. I think I ended up giving both of those four stars. I didn't like them as much as Robin Year One. I think Robin Year One was very succinct, had very lovely art style and just storytelling, and had great dynamics between Bruce, Dick, Alfred, etc. Batgirl Year One was pretty standard. It had a lot of the development of Barbara trying to find her place, trying to connect with the Bat family, and trying to hide this sort of crime-fighting life from her father, Jim Gordon. And I just didn't like the villains. I don't like Killer Moth and I don't like Firefly. And I know those are Batgirl's villains. I just don't like them. And I hated the plot that there was like two of each of them. Like there were like imposters. I don't know. I don't like either of them. Firefly and Killer Moth are both just like super annoying. I don't like their gimmicks and stuff. So they sort of pushed down my enjoyment of the book. But it was fine enough. And as for Nightwing Year One, I don't know what it was. I was not a huge fan of it. I don't know if it's the circus storyline that I don't really enjoy. I don't like when Dick goes back to the circus. Or is it because Bruce kidnapped Jason? Instead of just being like, ha ha ha, how charming. Someone stole the wheels off the Batmobile. He kidnapped Jason and forced him to be Robin? I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like how Bruce is acting in this story. And sure, it is from Dick's point of view, so maybe we're not getting an accurate representation, but I just think that they failed to capture the tension between Dick and Bruce properly. I don't think that him being slightly late to a domestic dispute with Clayface is enough to fire him. I preferred, honestly, in the new Batman adventures where Batman took it too far and Dick decided to leave plus the other tension on top of that. There needs to be more of a reason to fire Robin than just he was slightly late to something that didn't even matter. So that one was not my favorite, but both of them were fine enough. Next, I read Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. This is a pretty recent novel set in 1799 in England, and it's about this woman who lives with her um, antique store running uncle, and she's trying to make it into making like jewelry, and she's trying to make it on her own. And her uncle is like this shady guy who goes into like the black market antiquing, and he finds what they believe to be Pandora's box or Pandora's jar. And it's like cursing people and stuff. And she partners up with this guy named Edward who runs a like book binding business and he's trying to get into this like antiquarian society. And it's a very Dickensian novel based around Greek myth. That is a very interesting premise but this book to me I just did not enjoy and it was for a lot of tedious mundane reasons. Firstly, this is a debut, and that is not a problem, but unfortunately all debuts are just kind of like that. Secondly, it is entirely present tense, and I can't stand present tense. Like, she is not currently doing that. All books should just be past tense third person. I don't know. I just hate that kind of writing style. It was also incredibly simplified writing, and... It follows the very Dickensian convention that all bad people are fat and ugly, and all good people are beautiful, innocent, and young. I just hate that, especially for a modern novel. Why are you writing such grotesque writing about fat people? Who are you, J.K. Rowling? Like, shut the fuck up. Plus, I just didn't really care about the characters' motivations or where they were going to end up. I thought there was going to be more involved with the whole Pandora's box thing. Nah. It's just kind of a heist, chase, hiding, escaping the uncle type story, and I find that a little boring. So this book was a two star for me. Um, it's a very interesting premise of a Dickensian novel based around Greek myth. That's very interesting, but the execution just did not work for me. So yeah, a little disappointed. 
but it is a different sort of Greek myth retelling than all of the usual stuff that is currently in trend. And finally, I quickly read Before the Batman, an original movie novel by David Lumen. This was a cheap cash-in that was released prior to the 2022 of the Batman film, and was meant to sort of tie in and explain stuff prior to the film's release. This book is about Bruce, who does not seem to be traumatized by the events of his parents' death, deciding to get a summer hobby of drag racing after college. That has no connection to the Batman film, the tone of the Batman film, the explanation and backstory that is implied in the Batman film. What do you mean he just took up being the Batman as a summer hobby? Also, this book implies like he is a genius at absolutely everything, at detective skills, at forensics, at just reading about everything. He's obsessive, but he's not perfect yet. Even in the Batman film, he's only in his first couple years of being the Batman. And Alfred knowing where he is at all times and just being constantly watching him and knowing what he's up to, that's, you know, annoying and sort of removes the stakes of the book. Also, this book tries to imply that the Riddler just has this huge vendetta against only Bruce Wayne and not the system he was born under and, you know, the resentment based on the Wayne's promise for renewal failing. Like... No, him personally, because he saw him once when he was a child. This is just a total failure to capture the film's tone, message, backstory, plot, characters, etc. And was a cheap gimmick to make us spend money because it has the Batman's title. Oh well, it looks pretty on our Batman shelf. <laughs> so that's my update for now. I am currently listening to the audiobook of Holly Madison's second book. Um, it's her The Vegas Diaries, I believe it's called. It is essentially just a more like detailed version of the last quarter of her novel Down the Rabbit Hole, and I thought that I would just listen to it on audiobook because she narrates it, and it's just pretty good so far. It's nothing like drastically life-changing and like capturing to me as her first novel was but I didn't expect that so this is just a light easy read for the end of the month so stay tuned for my wrap-up very soon
Okay, so my cat is up to mischief, so if you hear a bell or yelling or claws or itching, that's him. Okay, welcome to my final wrap-up of the month. So this month I read eight books. Now the first book I read was for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster, and that was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, and I ended up giving that book three stars. Ultimately, I think it was a very good story, a very good adventure about revenge. However, it was just a bit too long, there were a bit too many characters for me to be fully immersed, and I found myself a little bit bored by the end. So that was the only thing that took away from it. I would highly recommend it for people who are into that sort of long, complicated plan and adventure. And I really enjoyed it. Of course, Alexandre Dumas is an excellent author. I then listened to the audiobook of Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, and that's only getting one star from me. I only read it because it was on the Goodreads list of best vampire novels. This novel was released in 2005. It is part of like a 25 book series about the Dark Brotherhood, very dark romance fiction, very aggressive dominant males, mating, etc. A lot of fat phobia, sexual assault, kidnapping, and poor treatment of women. I did not enjoy it. If that is your thing, please go enjoy it. But I think it was just a bit too dated and too macho for my liking, and I will not be continuing that series. Next up, the first comic of the year that I read was Robin Year One by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty. This is the first of three of the Year One comic books that I read. I really, really enjoyed it. As I said earlier, I just really loved the art style, I loved the cohesive story, I loved the multiple plots going on, and I love how they tied into Bruce, Alfred, and Dick's relationship, and how he struggled to become Robin in his very first year. So this was an obvious five star for me. I really, really enjoyed it. I then read Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman, which was a 2022 debut release. It is a Dickensian style novel about this woman who uncle works at an antique place and he goes into like black market dealings and he ends up finding what they believe to be Pandora's box and she seeks the help of this man who works at a bookbinding shop and who wants to join the antiquarian society and they struggle to uh, get this box away from their her scheming uncle. Very interesting story and premise. That's very interesting. I like the idea of a Dickensian style novel with a Greek myth twist. However, the characters were very one note. The villains were all fat, ugly, mean people, and all the good characters were hot, young, skinny people. Just and the way that they were described, it's a very British thing, isn't it, to just talk about how fat and gross somebody is for multiple pages? I'm not into that sort of thing. So I was not compelled by the characters, nor the romance, nor did I care if they came out of the situation alive. And I ended up giving the book two stars, which is unfortunate because the cover is so pretty and the premise was so interesting. I then read Batgirl Year One and Nightwing Year One by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty, and both of them got four stars. The Batgirl one was pretty interesting, and I liked her character arc, her struggling to hide this identity from her father, her clashing with Batman and Robin, but ultimately I do not like Killer Moth or Firefly, so they were the villains of that one, and it sort of uh, pushed it down the rating for me. And as for Nightwing Year One, this one had a bit of a complicated story to tell. The explanation for why Batman fired um, the first Robin was very poor, very weak, and not very compelling at all. And I hate the idea that Bruce kidnapped Jason. I think all of those Robins volunteered, right? They should all volunteer. It's very, very creepy. And the art style of both was not the best. I then read Before the Batman, an original movie novel by David Lumen, and this gets one star for me. This was just a sort of pre-release right before the Batman movie came out, and it was supposed to explain the motivations and the past of the characters of Batman and the Riddler prior to the film, and it does not connect at all. There is no connection, there is no tone, there is no good character work. This is essentially Bruce Wayne's drag race, and I hated it. So don't read this, this was just sort of a cheap cash-in and we fell for it because it has the Batman on it. So don't bother. 
And finally, I listened to the audiobook of The Vegas Diaries by Holly Madison, which is sort of a pseudo-sequel to her memoir Down the Rabbit Hole. This book talks more about her life as a girlfriend of Hugh Hefner and living in the Playboy Mansion versus The Vegas Diaries was about her finally getting out of that life, trying to avoid her connections to Playboy, her work on Dancing with the Stars, and her work on getting her spin-off TV show Holly's World and dating a few guys. Uh, she gave most of them pseudonyms, so it doesn't really matter who they are, but it was ultimately just a weaker story, and she does talk about her life in Vegas in this first memoir. I believe she only did this second novel because the publishers wanted it, and that's not a problem. It is a very short book as well. It's only like 270 pages, so if you are interested in it, you go ahead and read it, but ultimately you can get everything out of her first novel, and I didn't hate listening to her do her own audiobook. I think it was very well done, very well written. So ultimately that book is getting a three star from me. And as for my month, I did succeed in reading eight books. I believe I will be attempting to read eight books a month. I think that means I'll get to 100 books read this year, but that's my goal so far. Uh, this month has been a little bit off, not only with the winter blues finally setting in, we got a crap load of snow, ice, and rain. I lost my job so that was really really hard. It was out of my control and not my fault, but it still sucks. And I'm hoping that as the months go on and the weather improves that my mood will improve as well. I know I didn't have a lot of insert clips because I didn't go to many places or do very much. So yes, that was my January. Uh, thank you so so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you're interested in more. Um, happy birthday to my sibling. My sibling's birthday is this month. Happy happy birthday. I love you so so much. I can't wait to have our special day together and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.